Welcome to Say It's Daily Podcast. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. We're blessed enough to have Bigfoot researcher Thomas Shea on tonight. How are you doing, Thomas? Hey, I'm doing fine. How are you doing tonight? you taking the time out of your night, man. Oh, anytime. And I'm good, brother. How are you tonight? Oh, super. Anytime I get to talk about Bigfoot, man, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> So what we want to talk about tonight? Anything special? <laughs> Anything special? Uh, have you had uh, any recent stories of Bigfoot sightings up in your area? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> in my area, yeah, there's been. I, I had a I had an encounter that I'm still working on. Uh, it was real early in the morning. I actually uh, it ran across the road on all four legs. Well, all fours, limbs, and. Uh, <clears throat> I almost hit it with the car and I run off into the ditch and it, it ran from, I was going uh, South on uh 42 us 42. And, uh, it come from the East going West and it actually run out in front of the car. Like I said, on all fours. And uh, I swerved and went off into the Northbound lane and over into the ditch. And, you know, it stopped there for a little bit after it crossed over the road in front of my car. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, it had sort of like it had a little, like a muzzle. But <clears throat> it could have been a deformity. And I'm not saying a dog ran out because I didn't see no ears. I didn't see no no tail. And it was, it was still stocky and not very tall, about seven foot. And, you know, the first one that ran across the the, the, uh, the road, the first thing I thought was, oh, we got a bear running through the camp. And every once, every 10 or 15 years, we'll get a bear that comes in here from out of eastern Kentucky, you know. Uh, well, we got one this time. Well, this thing stood up after after it ran off, you know, I ran off the road, stood up from the car on two legs and walked off on two legs. Well, actually ran off. And, uh, but uh, the one thing that, that that I actually looked at really, it, it stood out was the face. It looked like it had a muzzle, you know. But, you know, it could have been an injury. It could have been a deformed death from birth. You know, I'm still trying to, you know, figure out what I saw. Now, how tall was the uh, was the entity? Uh, it was about seven foot. It wasn't very tall. But it was, it was, it was stock. <clears throat> but uh, I went back that later at, when it got light, I went back and looked and you can see where it had been squatting down in the, the uh, soybean field. And that place was just mashed down where it had been in there. <clears throat> but the ground is so hard here because we had this drought and we had no rain. And the ground's like concrete, asphalt. You know, and in the grass, you can see where it had walked. But it hurts. Yeah, we've had a bad drought here as well, here in East Grand Hook. <clears throat> in this area. Uh, there was a pond that uh, I was called out to, and uh, they found these footprints. Okay, uh, I got out there right after they called me and told me, well, we found these and we were kind of look at them. So I went out and looked at them. And, you know, they are actually, I believe, big footprints. They're not, you know, where somebody made them or soaked them out of the mud or nothing. You know, it's where it stepped in and it came out and sucked out, took it closed up. I actually casted a couple of them. And uh, <clears throat> they're about 17 inches. But uh, <clears throat> that's the only way you're going to get tracks out here until we get some good rain is around watersheds. Yeah, we definitely need some rain around here, too. And uh, But that sounds like squatch land, man. You said a pond. I mean, they love to hang around water a lot, just like the other animals and predators and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I know another thing, too. I was out, I was out walking in the woods. And I noticed that, that, that there, the vegetation 
has actually just dried up. There's there's nothing out there. Um, so this is about harvest time. So sightings are actually going to increase here pretty soon because it's you know uh, we got corn out, we got corn fields, we got soybean fields, uh, the orchards, you know, rotten apples, you know that it has fallen. Uh, but we still got some of that stuff around. <clears throat> so there's no food out there. And I'm looking forward to hearing people see something out in these bean fields and, uh, and stuff. Yeah, people's going to be out hunting. Hunting season's coming up. Uh, there's definitely going to be a lot of sightings, especially here in eastern Kentucky as well, man. We've had some crazy sightings around here. Actually, in my county, there was one about three or four years ago. Uh, have you heard of Carsfort Lake? Yeah. Uh, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Here, here in Knott County. Um, there is a waterfall. These, uh, this couple was kayaking. They actually uh, seen a ape-looking creature on top of the cliff. And I've seen that cliff before. Ain't no human making it up there. And they said it was around seven foot tall. And the researcher told me that says that this couple was very credible. Wouldn't lie. Yeah. <clears throat> Body actions and, and facial expressions and stuff like that and how somebody talks, you can tell that, you know, they're serious about what they saw. And you don't need a psychology degree to, to see that. <laughs> I mean, there's so many of these guys. I got a degree in psych psychology, you know. <clears throat> well, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's gut instinct. Uh, but my wife does. Now, she's a, uh, she's got like three or four degrees in psychology. She's a, used to be a, <clears throat> a therapist for uh, young children who were crimes. And uh, there, you know, there's times when I videotape somebody giving me a statement or something like that, and I, you know, play it for her. I said, what do you think? Because, you know, there's times when you have your own that, on that, on that fence when you talk to somebody. And <clears throat> she could actually pick out something that I can't, you know, you know, flare, you know, do her uh, studies and stuff like that, teaching us. Education, <clears throat> but uh, but I did find out one thing from her that you know psychology is not a true science. It's, not, it's still not proven. You know, uh, for example, okay, you hear you, know, you ever heard the story where someone says, "Well, when they're not looking at you, they're lying at you." Yeah. Okay. Well, that's bogus. Okay. <clears throat> A lot of people have difficulty looking at somebody and, and talking to them. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's another thing too is just like like me, you know, I'll be sitting there talking to you, but I'm always looking around at my surroundings. Okay. You know, that's me. I'm cautious, you know, and I'm going to, you know, when I'm talking to you, I'm going to be looking around when I'm, if I'm outside. You know, that's military stuff there. You know, you can get. So, you know, if somebody says, well, he didn't even look me eye to eye, well, some people can't. And there's some reasons why they can't. So, you know, what I would tell a researcher is go back and double check yourself. Definitely. And, and I'll uh, tell you, what's up? I'll tell you one thing back in May, uh, I was a, uh, I was called up, and this gentleman down there, and it was southeastern Illinois, just right, like 20, 30 miles right on the other side of Vincent's in Illinois. Uh, he wanted me to come down and do a presentation for one of his, uh, well, uh, I think it was a big flea market they had there, and they had people speak and stuff, music. And I said, sure. So I went down there, and I got a friend. And he owns a place down there in Only. And his 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 farm is active. I mean, totally active. And it died off here the last couple of years, you know. And then st st suddenly it started getting to pick back up. 
Well, <clears throat> it was May 11th, Mother's Day is big. It was that Saturday. And it was about 9.30 at night. And we wanted to go out and see the, the Northern Lights at that time. <clears throat> so me, him, and a friend, we walked out. We walked out in the gravel road down his driveway. And there's a big field, you know, both sides of it. And uh, it was just light enough, bright enough out that you could see something running across the field. And I have a habit of taking my phone out and taking pictures real quick. Okay. Well, I took a picture. Now, I got a figure of something, you know, out there. It's not more than 70, you know, 70 yards, 70 yards from us, you know, something like that. I mean, it's, I got the picture on my, my Facebook page. You know, you can look at it, make your own, you know, decision. But we saw something moving. There was two other people there, and they saw this this figure too, just like I did. It's man shaped. We did a reenactment during the daytime, and there's <clears throat> there's nothing there in that area, you know, like a tree or a stump or anything like that. So we got something on on film. Yeah, that's <clears throat> awesome, man. Yeah, I love talking about Bigfoot and stuff. But uh, you've also shown like uh, footprints and stuff to Cliff from finding Bigfoot as well. Yeah. And he's got every almost everything in my collection in his museum. Uh, every time I get a, a, a new cast, uh, he gets a copy of it. You know, uh, and I do that for his museum, even though we're friends. But it's the idea that <clears throat> these castings that I do, when I get them, he takes them, makes copies. You know, it's an educational process. You know, which he's, he's teaching people about Bigfoot. And he's using my material, my evidence with that. And, you know, and that really makes me proud. You know, I'm not looking to get famous or have be out there on the circuit all the time and stuff like that. <clears throat> but it's for years I've always wanted my work to be uh, recognized and it has been but I'm, I ain't making no money at it you know and, and to be honest with you uh, you're the first podcast that I've done in over oh, maybe six months to because uh, I've been asked I just Eh. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely appreciate it for sure. Yeah. But uh, I don't do a whole lot of uh, conferences. Uh, simple fact is, if if I'm if I'm going to be away for you know all these weekends and stuff, when am I going to have time to do my research? Now, I'm doing one next in uh, October in Somerset. Okay. Uh, I know the guys. Uh, they own the uh, Paranormal Museum in Somerset. And uh, they actually got one of my castings of a, a Bigfoot print that I casted uh, several years ago down there by the lake. And they asked me to come up there, and I said, sure, I will. And <clears throat> Crypticon. I have to go to Crypticon every week. I love it. I love it. If, <clears throat> if you ain't never been, you need to go. The people are wonderful. I mean, <clears throat> this is what I tell people when, when they ask, what do they think about crypto? I said, well, if you go, I said, you know that person that you're, you're talking to? And it, he might be your research partner or she might be your research partner that later on that year. And then you become really good friends. I mean, you meet some of the most incredible people and you have these friends for life. You know, I'm blessed. I got some really good friends after meeting these people. Definitely, man. Uh, where's that at? Uh, which one? Oh, Cryptico. That's in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. 
That's yeah. November 22nd, 20, sorry, 21st, 22nd, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that date. Uh, I'm just, I know it's in November. It's the 20, I think it's 21st, 22nd. It's before Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, it's a two day event. You know, you're going to have Cliff there. You're going to have, uh, I believe, Renee, uh, Mark Marcel, um, talking about the Ape Canyon incident, which is really, really awesome. And, and you know, you'll have a whole bunch of other people there, uh, expedition big foot people. <clears throat> Yeah. But it's the, it's the it's the people out there that it's walking around, you know, and that you meet. You meet a lot of people. <clears throat> With some different stories too, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been asked this question, but have you ever seen a connection between UFOs and Bigfoot? I know where no. there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings, there's a lot of UFO sightings as well. No. Honestly, no. Uh, in my area, we just had, you know, some, some sightings. Uh, nobody's talked about you know, flying saucers or anything like that. I mean, every once in a while, somebody will say they've seen something here flying, you know, but there's nothing about Bigfoot at all. You know? yeah. Matter of fact, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Two years ago, I videotaped uh, uh, something flying in the air that was doing, I mean, some crazy uh, turns and stuff like that. Something that our aircraft, our aircraft can never do. You know, I took that videotape. <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, there's a lot of UFO sightings around here. Um, there's a few Bigfoot sightings. I think a lot of people won't tell you what they see, though. Uh, there's probably more Bigfoot sightings we don't even know about. Well, there's still that. I mean, it's opened up here since finding Bigfoot, the first finding Bigfoot. It has to. <clears throat> but you still have the people, the critics out there, that, you know, the skeptics, that put people down. You know, and, and, it, and our society right now, we got social media, and social media will hurt you bigger than anything else. So, a lot of people don't want to say nothing because you get all this hate speech and stuff. So, you know, and there's there's a lot of people that I've talked to that, that actually contacted me about their sightings. And actually asked me not to mention their names. But I do ask them. I said, okay. I said, Everybody knows I take notes. I said, can I put it in my notes, your name and information and stuff? I say, yeah. Just don't let nobody know. And, and, and I've been like that. I've had other researchers ask me, well, can I speak with this, this, this person? So I'll ask him or ask her. I said, it's up to them. I said, I won't freely give up the information. And, and I'll contact them. And I said, no. Yeah. And I'll contact them. Back and, say, no. and then the researchers go, well, you're lying about what happened. Well, <clears throat> I gave my word to a person. And if I can't keep my word, nobody else is going to trust me. So. Have you actually heard like somebody telling you a story where they've talked to Bigfoot and or like Bigfoot offering them gifts and all that? I've heard a lot of that. No. I've never heard any nobody's ever said anything to me about it, stuff like that. Okay. And I've heard people say that they've tried. And and nothing's come of it. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories where like Bigfoot offers like gifts, like leave stuff for like researchers and stuff. Well, I mean, there is some strange occurrences. Uh, we will put out marbles or uh, like I put out squeaky toys, and uh, 
home excuse me. And you know those uh, light activated pet toys. Yeah, I put those out. If we're out for a weekend, we'll be out there, and <clears throat> I'll put that most of their balls, and I'll put them in tie up in a tree. And <clears throat> there's been times when that ball will light up and be going through the woods, <laughs> or like the squeaky toy. One time we put the squeaky toys out and. <clears throat> we're sitting up there at camp <clears throat> listening and uh, we got this weird noise and we're looking at each other what is that you know and it's going on there for like five ten minutes like that and it dawned on me I said that's the squeaky toy something's got the squeaky toy out there and, <clears throat> and this is the honest truth uh, we put a big rubber chicken out there one of those big ones He's got the legs and everything on it. And it's made a noise. Well, we put it out there on this area and it disappeared. We looked for it all over the place and never found it. And about, oh, maybe a little over a week, uh, we went back to our area and this chicken was right there where we had put it in this tree. And I picked it up, looked at it, and noticed it. <clears throat> it wouldn't squeak. I looked down and that little squeak thing that's in the uh, bottom of the toy had popped out. So we're thinking that uh, the little thing that made the noise popped out and it wasn't in, you know, they didn't like it no more, so they brought it back to more no. So we did put it, we go out and get another one, put another one out, and it disappears. And the same thing happens again, you know, a couple of weeks later, it's back in that same tree, and it's been ripped, or like I said, that little toy thing that makes, it, makes the sound <clears throat> has popped out. That's definitely a crazy story, man. <laughs> it's true. I mean, uh, I've the people that research with me talk to them. They'll tell you the same thing. I don't know. I believe you. It's just very uh <laughs> it's interesting, man. It's crazy. Know, it's out. way it's way out there. You know, you think, really? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> but you have to be there when when you when you do this stuff. Yeah. Because if you're not there, you know, a whole lot of things are in your mind. They're making yeah. this up or nothing like that. But when you've got like four or five people with you and all this is happening, and they're, they're seeing it too, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Have you uh, found any like Bigfoot nests and stuff? We I found a nest uh, in a pine grove. There's a little area that's got them pines and cedars. Well, <clears throat> we found something that looked like a big all the cedar uh, limbs were broke off and put down like a bed. And uh, something had been laying. Something big had been laying. And uh, <clears throat> I, I always thought that was a bed. But there was no way that I could prove it at that time. Yeah. Did you find any uh, hairs or anything? Oh, man, I got hairs. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I got one that's got the gold standard that Dr. Meldrum had checked out. Uh, I got a couple others. I also got one here that if you put it under a light, uh, it will uh, disappear. Hmm. That's wild. Yeah, and, and the strangest thing is, is that <clears throat> with this hair, we were uh, at, a, at this lady's house. A farm, and they live in a log cabin. And <clears throat> what they was telling us was just whatever this thing was, it came down. When they would leave, uh, it would come down to the kitchen window because she left all the dish detergent in the in the window, and it would come up there and pop the screen out and take the dish detergent and play outside the window on the ground with that stuff, you know, the spirit. <clears throat> and uh, I said, well, you know, one day if, 
when this happens, call me and I'll be right there. Well, they came back from Louisville and uh, it had happened again. But this time here, whatever it was, it reached in. <clears throat> Got some hair hung up there in the wood, in the, in, the, in the ledge, and pulled a big chunk of hair out. <clears throat> and she, uh, she called me up. I went down there, uh, took pictures of where it had dumped all the dishwashing detergent and played in it. And she showed me where the hair was. And uh, I took the hair and a piece of the wood. Uh, gave one he gave a couple strands to clear. But like I said, we, he even did it, and I did it too. We put it under a microscope with the light. It disappeared. It, it's luminous. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Put it up a little bit. Man. Yeah, I can see it a little bit. See where we took pictures of the hair? Here's, yeah. It's, cl it's clear. And that's the, the, if you look here, that's there's a piece of wood and all that hair. But the, the little hair is right in there. And you probably can't see it because of the light. No. Yeah, the only other animal that does that is a polar bear. That's amazing, man. We know there ain't no polar bears in Utah. No. <laughs> but I mean, that's yeah. incredible evidence for real. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And, and, you know, like I said, I got some gold standards that I had doc, that Dr. Meldrum actually checked out. And it, and it met Fairmax gold standard. <clears throat> and I got that framed with his email in it where he emailed me and told me about it and stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah. And I have other, other pieces of hair that's been checked out that uh, meet the standard. Uh, one, two. I got all these things hanging up. Three, <laughs> four. Five uh, that had been checked as gold standard, and I don't know how many more I have in a box that haven't been checked yet. Yeah, man, that's amazing. <clears throat> you know, if you're a researcher, go along fence rows, barbed wire, even regular wire fence, you know, straight wire fence. Uh, well, sometimes catch a piece of hair. Uh, if you get into an area where there's a, there's a trail, a small trail, <clears throat> when you're walking through that, take your time and look at the tree. Look at the little branches. Every once in a while, you'll see a little strand of hair that has been pulled off on a little twig. It's that you, know, you just can't go in the woods and be like a, a steamroller. <laughs> you know, you got to slow down, you got to look, you got to pay attention. But that there, when you sit, tell people that it's boring. You know, it's not exciting. They see it on TV, and they just, <clears throat> you know, blaze a trail and expect that all the evidence is going to hit them in the face. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, definitely takes time to find the evidence. A lot of people don't even like going out with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if I pick up a trail and I find a trackway or something like that, uh, okay, <clears throat> I, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> automatically just take off and follow this trail. You know, I'm going to study everything that I got right now, you know. It might take me a good hour just to move, you know, two yards. Because I got to investigate this, you know, first. There's too much, there's too much evidence in that two foot square <clears throat> to walk away. Definitely, man. Uh, have you found any hairs like in bird's nests and stuff? I've seen on. Yeah. Uh... Yes. Yes. Uh, it was just uh, we just found a nest and noticed that there was hair in it wrapped up <clears throat> well uh, I made a comment that you know <clears throat> there might be there might be 
cow hair or horse hair. Again. <laughs> okay. But there's a possibility that one of those hairs ate. And out of all that, they found one strand that wasn't horse, that wasn't cow. So. Did you uh, get that hair looked at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, I just actually sent it off here a couple of couple weeks ago uh, like uh, the new uh, DNA test that's going on and I also sent a jar of peanut butter in that had been scooped out uh, we gift it uh, when we do that when we do the peanut butter thing we go and get a jar <clears throat> and we don't unseal it we make sure that it's still sealed we don't break the seal and that's We'll take it out there and we'll tape it to a tree and leave it. Then come back. Now, I use 550 tape. You know, it's that military grade tape that they use in heavy drops. <clears throat> and we tape that to a tree. I mean, you got to have some strength to break out. And we'll go back and you'll find the peanut butter jar uh, off. Either down downhill or uphill or several, you know, yards away. <clears throat> the seal it had been opened. The seal had been broke. Something had reached in and scooped out a whole bunch of peanut butter. And the biggest thing is, is the jar has been put back on. The top has been put back on tight. <clears throat> so we know a raccoon doesn't do that. And as tight as these jars are sometimes, <clears throat> uh, a rodent is going to chew through the plastic before they try to twist the top off. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know if you know that about the uh, Nutella casted idea where I froze the jar of Nutella uh -huh. after having it out there. Yeah, well, I froze it. Me and Steve Cornell, he came up with this plan about doing a, a track, hair track, big PVC tube, hang on the tree uh, with sandpaper glued in it and put a jar of peanut butter or something and if, if whoever reaches in to get it we pull hair with the sandpaper up. Uh, he pitched it to me and I sat back and thought about it for a couple of hours and I said <clears throat> I called him back up I said let's do it. So we did it. Now we went out there the first time set it all up put the jar in and left. Well, I went back a couple of days later just to check on it. I noticed the jar was down on the ground and I opened it up and you can see where it looked like somebody had scooped in it. <clears throat> well, I'm excited. I'll go home. I call him up and I tell him. He goes, Tom, I'm going to tell you something because I am not sure that my wife maybe opened that up, scooped some of that out. I said, that's fine. I said, I'll go get another jar of Nutella and put it out. So I went to the store, got another jar, went out there, put it out there and came back a week later. <clears throat> Okay, the jar is like 30 to 40 feet uphill. Okay, we all know jars don't roll uphill. So I went and picked it up and, and noticed that it looked like some of it had been scooped out, you know. So I opened it up and sure enough, the seal had been broken and then uh, something had been reached in there and scooped out. <clears throat> so I said, well, good. I'm going to take this home and check it out, stuff like that. You know, maybe, maybe there might be a little bit of hair in there, or maybe I'll have some dermals. <clears throat> so I put the top back on it and threw it in my cooler with ice. So I get back home, and I take it out of the cooler, and I notice that it's stiff and dry. And I said, I said so look at my wife and said, look, I'm going to put this in the freezer. I don't know why to touch it until the morning. And I'll get it out. <clears throat> so I get it out in the morning and it's froze hard as a rock. I go straight out to my building, I mix up some plaster and I pour it in. <clears throat> After I did that, I cut the jar off and what I got was the impressions of whatever scooped that out. <clears throat> and uh, to my knowledge today, I'm the only one that's ever done that so far and Cliff's actually got uh, got it uh, one in his museum with a jar 
you know, that Melissa made up, showing out, put it in and showed what would have happened, you know, the damage to it, how it happened. <clears throat> That's amazing, man. But you can also see with the casting, you see the, the fingernails, tip of the fingernails, where it went down there. That's, I mean, that's incredible evidence for sure. You got uh, any upcoming stuff? I mean, uh, outings? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't. Uh, my team, uh, uh, John Gregory, <clears throat> he uh, he's the one that's running everything right now. I have a, I'm doing a private thing right now. Uh, I'm in an area that <clears throat> I don't want a whole lot of people in. <clears throat> I got some good evidence going on, and I don't want to mess it up by taking too many people in. So if it's just me, I can get some really good evidence documented stuff before I bring anybody else in. So, yeah, <clears throat> if he's doing all, all the other stuff, the other areas. This is a new area, and I want to work it out really good. You know, definitely. I don't want nobody to contaminate it. Definitely, man. I definitely appreciate you being on, brother. I'm glad to be here. I want to thank Bigfoot researcher Thomas Shea for being on. Everybody, have a good night and God bless. Night, buddy.